Hi everyone, it's Tanya and I am back today to share this card idea I had using the Tim Holtz Sizzix New Colorized Dye Set called Edison. You're going to be able to find the link to Edison and all the other products in my description below. Um, some of my products are going to be affiliate links. I do make a small commission off of those helps me to continue making these videos and creating and sharing with you all. So anytime you click one of those links, it is very much appreciated. So let's get started on the card for today. So I saved a little time today by going ahead and prepping some stuff. I have an A2 card base here that I just cut a piece of black cardstock, slightly smaller, so I'd have that little bit of a white edge on it. Then I have a piece of white watercolor cardstock that is cut, I believe this was five by, I think it's five by 3.75 is what this is. Um, so I got that ready. I cut out a stencil using my Cricut. I will link my, um, Cricut file for this if you have a Cricut below also, so you can cut one out. If not, this is a pretty simple shape. You probably could draw it and cut it out. You could cut this out of paper or whatever. I used a piece of, um, um, acetate that came over top of a stamp, um, just to reuse that. I went ahead and cut out my Edison. I did not cut the extra stem pieces. I want this to have that kind of retro vintage look. So we're going to keep his stem black. I cut two of the base piece in black, two of the middle piece in cream, and then I cut three of the top piece in like this bright orange color. This way I'll get some extra dimension without having to use foam tape. I also cut out some of the little like star pieces from his um, Atomic Elements die set from Tim Holtz, uh, uh, excuse me, Atomic Elements die set. So I have those cut out and ready to go also. I've got all my inks and stuff out, and we're going to get started first with this background. So I'm going to move my car base to the side, and I am just going to place this down and put my stencil where I want it. I will take a little bit of tape just to give it a little bit of extra security here because I don't want it moving around on me. go and I'm going to use twisted citron in distressed oxide I just kind of like to go around the edges first is moving on me probably should have used a thicker acetate but it'll be okay so once I've got that oh, it's still trying to move on me there we go got that inked up put this to the side I'm going to use my heated tool and just go over it a little bit Give it a quick dry. And I'm going to take some of the Wicked Elixir Distress Mica Stain. I shook it up earlier, but I'll give it a little shake again. And I'm just going to put a little bit on my mat here. Let 
I'm going to try to splatter some of this. This fan brush doesn't always splatter the best, so we'll see. Oh, I did good. Maybe a little bit more. I don't think I've got enough on the brush. There we go. And as you can see, I cut my stencil on because I didn't want it getting on the white part of the um, card. Okay. Move that to the side. Pick this up. And, well, you know what? I'm going to do this before I move my stencil. Because knowing me, I'll drop the stencil right down on top of it. So I'm going to give that a little bit of a dry. Now we can remove our stencil. And I see a little bit leaked under there somehow. But that's okay. We will clean that up. See if we can get a little bit of that off. I know it's not all going to come off because that is oxide, but we might can lift some of it. Yeah, there we go. Okay, looks like we got most of it off. We'll go back over again. Quick drying. And our background is done. If that little bit bothers you, you could always go over it with like a white gel pen to hide it. It doesn't bother me. It's fine. So I'm going to glue. go ahead and glue this background on. And I'm going to set that aside so it can be drying while I um, work on the rest. So I'm using Barely Art Glue. Today, this is my favorite glue, honestly. I use this all the time. And let's just see if we can get this centered. It's pretty good. You know what? I'm going to sort of take this. And I'm going to set it to the side and sit something on top of it just to be sure it stays flat. Okay, the next thing we're going to work on is our jack-o'-lantern. So we're just going to glue the two black back pieces together. And I'm going to use the Barely Art glue again for that. Make sure we get them nice and lined up. That's why I like working with this glue. It gives you a little bit of wiggle room. Okay. Now we're going to glue the two middle pieces together. Same way. Just using the Barely Art glue. Make sure we get them nice and lined up. And the same with the front. Except for this one is three layers. Who else is so excited about all the new Halloween stuff coming out? Especially the new Tim Holtz stuff. This is my favorite time of the year. I love Halloween. It's my favorite holiday. And then I get so excited when the Tim Holtz stuff comes out. In all, it, normally it's August, but this year was early, which was even better. But August 
It's also my birthday month. So I always ask for all the new Tim Holtz stuff for my birthday. So I got some birthday stuff pretty early this year, which was not bad. I have to say I didn't mind it at all. I am super eager to see the new Tim Holtz Stampers Anonymous stamp sets too. The stamps and the dies are always my favorites. I love all the Tim Holtz Halloween stuff, but those are definitely my favorites. And if you follow me, and if you're on my Instagram, you definitely know I have been doing Halloween projects for a while now. I absolutely despise Christmas in July, but I can do Halloween all year round, to be honest. Halloween just makes me happy. Christmas, not so much. <laughs> don't get me wrong. I don't dislike Christmas, but it's not, not my favorite holiday for sure. Okay. So, I got those three put together. Now, what we're going to do next is we're going to use a little bit of antique linen. And we're just going to kind of, and that part's not going to show. That's why I kind of didn't mind starting there. I'm just trying to lightly get it to where it's going to show. I don't want to it really dark in those areas but little bit darker let's move this I feel like that's picking up some of my ink for some reason oh yeah that's better and let's come in from the top let's see if I like how that looks yeah, much better. Okay. So we'll move our antique linen out the way. I've got a pile going over here. Just knock my paintbrush in the floor. I will wait and grab that after I was done. But um, I don't want my Yorkie getting it. <laughs> If it's in the floor, he tends to think he can have it. Okay, so for the wipe this up real quick. For the um top of the jack o' lantern, we're gonna go with some vintage photo. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you, but I messed up this morning. I realized I had used my um Distress ink brush in my Distress Oxide ink by accident instead of my Distress Oxide brush. So I had to clean it um, quickly so I didn't get to run it through water. So I'm a little afraid to actually put that in the ink pad. I am using Distress ink here. The antique linen was Distress ink. Um, the green was Distress Oxide. But I used... Finished photo, distressed oxide a few days ago, and accidentally used my ink brush. So today, instead of just dipping it in the ink, I put some ink on my pad, and I'm going to use that instead because I don't want to risk contaminating my distressed ink and finished photo because, to be honest with you, that's probably my favorite distressed color of all time. So I'm just going to put it on here and go from off of here 
and I'm just going to go around the edges of my jack-o-lantern very lightly. So you can see I'm dipping it in and then patting it on the mat so that it um, takes some of it off. I'm going a little bit around his eyes. And his mouth. And we'll see how we like that. Okay, let's try to soften this up a little bit here. Much better okay get these out the way and I always try to clean this ink up and not for any other reason other than I don't want to stick my arm in it because I have done that before and I don't really want to walk around with um, brown ink stains in my arm all day Okay, so let's put our jack lantern together, which is super easy. Just gonna use my barely art glue again. We're going to assemble him. I think this is probably one of the easiest color eyes I've ever seen. But he's super cute. I was so excited when I seen the this was coming out and I knew this would probably be the first one I used and it was and I knew I'd probably use it multiple times and I have <laughs> okay got him on there now let's do the front I usually keep a rubber band on my glue bottle to hold the little stopper thing down when I'm using it but that snapped this morning and for some reason I cannot remember where I put my extra rubber bands so I'll have to find those here in a little bit that wasn't as important as making a card today <clears throat> Get him lined up. Oh, love it. I love that he's kind of got those like retro vintagey colors. There we go. Now, get the card base back out. I'm gonna make sure there's nothing on my table, my mat rather, to get onto my card base and apparently we did have some ink on there so it's a good thing I cleaned that off okay oh if you're wondering I got this little bowl that um it's holding all my die cut pieces it's magnetic um I got two of these actually my husband got me one at Harbor Freight and the other one is from Walmart they are perfect for when you're doing die cutting because you can just pop your dies down. Is there something in the bottom of this one? Um, you can just pop your dies down in there and it holds them perfectly. I mean, it is really strong. And then when you're you're done, you know where all your dies are. You don't have to worry about you done lost some of them. And I see where I smeared some ink again somehow. So let's just clean that off. Today is just one of those days I'm smearing ink, and I know I'm going to put one of the um, stars there, so I'm not too worried about it.
Okay, now I just want to figure out where everything's gonna go. Just gonna lay my pumpkin down. I'll get all my little stars out. Yeah, let's so see. That'll cover that. I've got a little piece hanging off that one I want to get off. There we go. Um, let's see. I like to lay everything out before I start gluing. Gives you a little bit better idea, I guess, of where you want to put things. And you can move things around if you don't like it. just feel like it's the easier I love how that fits exactly on that corner right there that is I did not plan that but I'm not complaining okay so I really like this layout here and I'm gonna be honest I'm probably not gonna put any kind of saying on this card yet I don't know that I want to put a saying on the front I kind of just like the retro energy look just put something inside I don't feel like every single card front has to say something. Sometimes you can just send a card and the whatever you want to say is on the inside. So we're just going to leave it plain for today. If you want to add something to yours, absolutely go for it. Like I said, if I decide later on I want to stick the uh, saying on the front of this before sending it i'll do it then but as of now i really just like it like this and why not just do things the way you like it <sighs> sometimes we don't have to follow the rules we can just go by our own rules break those rules especially when it comes to creating I know I get quiet sometimes when I do these, but it's just me. I feel like I'm concentrating. If I'm talking, I'm not concentrating. <laughs> and you can put as many or as little of the little stars as you want I went with oh I really wanted that oh, like that there we go um like I said you can put as many or as little as you want I want it I want it to do like an odd number I feel like and I don't usually like odd numbers to be honest with you of anything it's just it throws me off um oops but um, when it comes to putting like embellishments and things on your cards, I guess they say odd numbers are more um, appealing to the eye, I guess. I don't know. I'm starting to wonder if I should have cut extra ones. No, I shouldn't have. And you can always change your mind about where you put stuff so that's up to you put those there i feel like i should have put that one down further but it's okay now i'm debating on one whether i want to use gems or not i've got some green ones out to match that background let's just see oh we may want to use these I think and I love these these are like um oh, what if I put one there these are um I think three or four different sizes in here if I can link these I will these actually came from um Timu 
they're supposed to be I hate when I do this knock it over and then I can't get it back on the right side these are supposed to be um fingernail gems I guess but they let's move the little one down here maybe um whoops I say oh they're supposed to be fingernail gems but they work perfectly on cards oh kind of like that okay so we'll do that Is trying to move on me. I'm going to move this one down a little bit. And oh, that one tried to move too. Let's take my finger and press them down. And there we go. There is the finished card. How cute is that? It's a little retro pumpkin. So again, I will link below everything that I use that I can link. Um, I really would appreciate if you would like this video and follow me. Um, or subscribe rather. I always say follow. I'm so used to saying follow. Um, <laughs> like and subscribe. It, um really helps when you like the videos subscribe to my channel and get some out there more um if you have any questions i'm always happy to answer questions just um ask below as soon as i see them i'll try to get a get, get you an answer to your questions um again i'll also link my um cricket give you my cricket link for um, the stencil if you want to cut one you could cut this out of paper or anything honestly I mean if you're just going to use it once I'd cut it out of paper and toss it um, I probably should have cut it out of paper it probably honestly would have even been more sturdy out of paper than this flimsy acetate but I had this on hand and I was like I'll just use that I probably well I may keep it I may just cut a different one out of actual stencil paper if I'm going to keep it um but you could cut it out of paper or anything. If you don't have a Cricut, that's a pretty easy shape you could just draw and cut out and make your own stencil. Um, in the um, set these, the stars are in, they, um, I think it's Atomic Elements, if I'm not mistaken, it has a similar like moon shape. It's not as big and I wanted something bigger because I was actually going to use that. Um, but you could honestly just cut that out and, and use that as a stencil or just use the shape behind it and it would give you something similar to this. Um, like I said, there's so many ways you could do this and make it your own. Um, you could add a, a saying to the front if you want or not. Um, I'm going to leave mine for now, but like I said, I'm rambling on here. <laughs> Do it your way. I just wanted to sh share something today I haven't shared in a while. I'm hoping to get a couple more videos out. Not taking so long this time. I've just had a lot of health things going on. Um, so it's it's just not. <laughs> videos have not been my top priority lately. But anyway. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Um, again, please like and and um, subscribe if you can. I really appreciate it. Thanks again. Have a great day.